Good morning, everyone here. Um, it's my honor just to represent uh, the social gaming in Chinese market. So basically, my original title is a social casino for the Chinese market. But for some obvious reasons, that's why I have to change the titles. I think, I think most of you here, you probably know more than me about like the social gaming side. But I, I'm in the casino and iGaming industry for a couple of years. So we published and operating some social casino in Asia, especially in Great China, Chinese market. So I probably have, I can share some knowledge about the social casino and also um, how to operate those type of products uh, for the Chinese market. Here we are. So there is no reason to talk about like the social gaming side. I think everyone here, they, you guys produce and develop the social games for, uh, for the world and publish an App Store and the Google Play, different you know, markets. But I have to emphasize, um, social casino market is a very big market, the segment of this market. If you look at the, if you look at the US market, if you see the top 10 games, you probably you have heard of it. games like uh, Somalia, uh, Big Fish Casino. They are l always on the top 10, top 20, and then it generates very stable cash flow for the companies. Pritika has predicted you know, the casino social casino market for uh, 2012 until the 2017. So obviously there are some you know, figures around. So we can see this market is uh, increasing year by year. And China's market obviously you know, it's a very important market in Asia. It doesn't matter the gaming type. It, it can be any type of the games. I, I have to say like SLG, you know, RPG games, but another you know, a category of the game is a social casino. In China, we, we, don't, we can't call it a social casino. We call it uh, you know, PSP games, or maybe poker games, or skill games. So the example games, such as like a Mahjong, a Fighting the Landlord, you know, those type of games. It's called a scale games, but it's a part of the social casino games. And we have, we have seen you know, the, the, the mobile phones expanding the Chinese market. The reason behind that is the hardware cost is just decreasing every year. And we, we have got you know, the new headsets, like three or four for each brand, like Xiaomi or uh, uh, and what it was, I mean, TAOC or something like that. It's uh, for the Chinese manufacturing. They're just dropping down the price for the hardware. So that's why the Android system is uh, Android phones. They are the major player for the Chinese market. But iOS and um, Apple, you know, mobile devices, they also popular. But they, they just split into the two segments: is a high end and is a medium to lower end products. Uh, we we all know should the free million and the premium model. But for the social casino, normally the free media model. It just gives you the free chips to play every day. And it's for free, but if you want if you wanna, you know, have more chips play on the table, you have to buy. So that's why that's a major income you get from like, the casino products. Also, some products, like my Vegas, they they can exchange your points or maybe your loyalty points which you earn through the game make it into some physical goods or service for instance you can exchange your points to the mgms you know uh, one night or two nights or maybe free meal yeah etc so that's why uh, the social casino model they normally they use like the free media model Popular games. I have. I, I. I can only see the popular games for the general, you know, titles like, you know, uh, Candy Crush, or maybe uh, COC, you know. But 
that's just for the general titles. For social casino sites, we, uh, we, we can see some you know, top-ranking games in China. Uh, they, most of them, they are made by Tencent. And some of them, they are from you know, the outsider, such as uh, Stromalia, Big Fish Casino. Even them are English version. But still, there are a portion of people they still play you know, the social casino game like slots. Uh, player, player experience. For China's market, the player experience is very important. It doesn't matter, you know, the ga gaming contents. If, if you provide like the R R RPG games, you know, if you provide sort of like the SLG games, you, you have to, you know, put lots of efforts on the player experience. Uh, some very good titles in China's market, they are more connected to, you know, the, the old story, you know, the, the, the martial arts, you know, that, that's a historical titles. But that's quite uh, popular for many years. So that's why lots of companies, they use that, they, the, such as like the Journey to the West and those type of, you know, famous stories and titles, they make it into the real games, the social games. So uh, we talk about uh, like the new waves to enhance the play player experience. In general, there are you know two ways. First of all, is uh, the bandwidth for for the Asian market, is for China's market. The broadband, the mobile broadband, the speed is increasing. So the major mobile operators, they actually they just change their networks, upgrade their networks. I mean, very frequently. So that's why we, we, we can have like 4G, 5G networks. And also the, the cost to use those uh, mobile broadband is reducing. So that's why people can have the, you know, less cost to have more speed on the internet. And in addition is the hardware, because as you see, like Apple, they release their new hardware like at least twice a year. Um, they gonna publish like the iPhone 7 and also there's something they already published their uh, what yeah let's take a look at the 4G or 5G LTE that's the networks we, we currently we have like a 4G but it's not you know widely accepted right now but that's a trend so 4G and 5G networks they're going to be you know the major reason to move the gaming content. So in the future, I think more and more gaming developers, they can bring the rich you know, media and rich content to the table because, because of the bandwidth and the connectivity will be more stable. So the player can have much better player experience to enjoy you know, the games. And the latest phones. We, we talk about the hardware improvements and despite the VR, AR technology, just for the phone, everyone here using like iPhone or maybe um, Samsung, Google phones, you know, it's smartphones. Smartphones have changed the world and get set up the new you know, industry. So that's why we have the App Store, we have the Google Play, we can release our titles, we can operate our games. People spend more time on the mobiles rather than PC and the desktop. So we can see the major operators in Europe for the online casino operators, they have more income from the mobile rather than desktops. So that means people, people stay in the bus and they're taking the bus, they're taking train, they spend time playing on casino games while they are on the way. So that, that, that's, that shouldn't be possible before, but that's a fact today. So it's just giving the more income to casino operators. Uh, I, give, I give some examples like uh, iPhone 6 and 6 Plus. The, the, the processor, hardware, and also the memory, they just you know, increase every year. So that's why you can see some 3D games. And it's, but if you use like feature phones before, you probably just play stacks or maybe very simple 2D games. But right now, you, you can enjoy some very advanced and sophisticated games, contents. Enjoy on the mobile. 
and there's something galaxy. This is outdated, obviously, because some some Galaxy Seven is already you know in the market. They have got more features and uh, better hardware, so which means it's capable of the new games and more fantastic games or contents. And topic about VR and the AR technology. You know, VR AR technology, I think, is utopic. The technology itself, it, it was invented, I mean, 10 or 15 years ago. But it started to get into the market by the companies and by the major players like Google and the Facebook, you know. So that's why it started to promote in this market. If the hardware, if the cost, if the price of the hardware decreasing, I think more and more people will accept that. Using this technology is going to create another, another kind of you know, player experience, such as if you use your phone, you play games, and you just wear glass, the VR glass, you will just enjoy the, you know, the, the phenomenon, you know, the environmental things. So it, it, it's quite important. I think it's going to be the next trend. And at the same period, I mean, there is another show in Macau. They actually, they are the major show for the gaming, and actually for the casino industry to demonstrate you know, all the games here. I've seen some companies, they bring their VR games already. People just wear glasses and they can enjoy the very real live dinner or other games. So that's going to be the next wave. It's just taking time to there. Okay, so opportunities. Opportunities for the social casino operators. For gaming operators and the gaming developers. I, it's, it's getting more and more difficult and more and more competitive to bring your contents. There are millions of apps in the App Store or maybe Google Play. You have to spend the money, you have to sp spend a fortune, or maybe you're going to share your revenue with the publishers. Try to get onto the ranking. Otherwise, you know, nobody can see your app. But social casino is different. They give you more stable income and also much more lifetime for the gaming. Because you can keep updating the gaming contents. If you play Slomania, you can see they released their title. The first version, I think, is in 2011 or 2000, 2010 or 2011. It's already five or six years already. But they are still alive, and they enjoy your, their lives. They have got very good income, and there are some big companies like Caesar or maybe land-based casinos. They already acquired those social casinos. Because social casinos can have the massive audience rather than the real money, you know, casinos. They can be appealing to the more customers, especially younger generation customers. And another factor is for the social casino is about the legality. So they are mostly legal in the most countries. There is currently there is no restrictions if you operate in the social casino games, even in China. So that's that's really interesting part because there is no block for casino contents in China, but it's hard to promote and market there. But you can still publish through the App Store or maybe Google Play. People can still download it. So there is no barrier for players to get in touch with the apps and download the apps. So that's another advantage for the social casino. But if you consider that a real money casino or online casino, there are lots of you know, legal, legal regulations, you know, issues associated with that. There are lots of jurisdictions. You have to get a license to operate. You have to get sort out everything with the local government. And in most countries, it's hard to promote and market a real casino. In, in some countries, they are banned. 
So that's why social casino they can face in the massive you know, audience and also you know, more stable income. So what should we expect? The VR, AR technology will be our expectation and also the consoles, the television, TV box, top, maybe we can play casino games, not even on like mobiles in the future. We can play on TV. We can play with the friends using the social networks and play with them together, just through like TV or maybe VR glasses. So that's going to be the trend. If the hardware, you know, if the hardware is getting more popular and the price is dropping down, it's going to be accepted by the market. So to summary, the social gaming industry is expanding and the speed is, it is I, I'm, I'm so surprised that when we see this industry rising since 2010, in, at that time, only few companies they actually develop so, social apps and publishing. But uh, you, you see how many people here right now, they talk about the social games, publishing, develop, and run the world. So you can see clearly the trend shows the market is increasing. It's the, the, speed, the pace is much, much, much faster than other industry. Also, the network and also the hardware is, inc is improving. So in that way, it can enhance the play experience. While, while we talking about like the hardware and also the speed, the contents, you know, the rich contents can be more and more compatible with the new hardware. So you can use the new features to make new type of games rather than you know, just the traditional games, use the fingers to play the game. And the, another factor about the social casino is the social casino, you can make one type of game and you can target in some specific countries. It doesn't matter, it has to be like China or maybe Vietnam or Malaysia, but you can target the whole Asia. You need to do some localization and use the new technologies, bring your content, and probably you will find you know, this type of a game is different from the traditional games. You can make more money, you can acquire the users cheaply. I, I, I think I can only share you with some general items with the Chinese market because I'm, I'm not expert, to be honest, I'm not expert with the social gaming side uh, on the Chinese market, but I will be more, you know, know to the social casino side. So I would like to, you know, if you have any questions talking about like a social casino, we can probably exchange the views and we can share the views and also maybe set up some, you know, the partnership or workshop with your guys talking about how we can publish and how we can develop the next generation of the social casino games. The market there and the players there, the only demand is just a very good quality content and good channels to publish. Because this is, this is not the same as the general games. You can advertise and you can promote your games easily. This type of, you know, tiny uh, industry of this game is actually, you have to be deeply work on that. Find out the right people and find out, you know, your audience and talk to them. They are just a small, you know, segment of your player base or maybe the age group, but they would like to pay and they have, you know, they have very stable and higher, you know, payer ratio for that. So. Thank you very much today, you know, for listening to this talk. And uh, I would like to share the views with you guys. If you do have any questions, please come back to me. Thank you. So, um, as we can see, most of the traditional like um, slot game companies have 
um, tapped into the market in terms of social casinos, and which actually really changed the industry given um, the, those slots uh, content really um, drive up the up down. Um, in terms of for the smaller players, um, how, what do you think of the market competitive landscape? Um, given those big game, big players, they have really premium content and they have a lot of cash in order to distribute the, uh, the games. How the smaller players are going to um, uh, win in the market? That, that's a very good question, I have to say, because as far as I can say, Play Studio, Pritika, they all grew up from a small, you know, studio and a small players. So I think still that's a fair opportunity for everyone here. But the only difference I have to see is after four or five years, there are some major players in this market for US, for Asia, you know, for even every local countries here. There are two factors you can consider. First of all is the contents. Because those big players, they normally they provide integrated casino. So that means they cover every type of games, such as slots, relay, blackjack, bakra, every type. So that's like, it, that's like Riddle's word here. If you, if you walk into the casino here, you can see different type of games. That's what they provide, like Big Fish Casino. That's one type of them. Another is you pick up one product line, like slots, because slots is quite popular in Western countries like US and European. So you specialize providing those very premium quality of the contents. That, in that sense, you probably can focus on this product line and make the special products for that. So I would say for small player, it's better to focus on one particular topic, or maybe product line, rather than you provide all products. Because it's very hard to compete right now if you pr provide the same contents, look similar, it's not going to be fancy for players anymore. So focus on very localized games and anything those big players that they won't produce or they don't want to produce for the local countries. Because local, local market, they actually they have their own favor for the games. Like Chinese market, they, they do love Mahjong, they do love like uh, fighting Nando. But if you bring this game to Malaysia, Indonesia, or maybe other Asia countries, they won't, won't accept that. For Japan, they, they only accept the paking, pachinko. They're similar to slots. So focus on some type of you know, special contents for the localized, localized contents. That's first thing. Secondly, choose your targeting market. You can't say, I'm, I'm going to provide one slot and I'm targeting the world. No. The slots you, which are used and may be popular in the U.S. may, may not you know, be attractive for the Chinese market. Players have different favors, so you have to pick up one specific you know, market and then find the right you know, distribution in China, work with the publishers, and then you get your rewards. So contents, specialized, localized contents, and also the targeting country or distribution China's will be your you know, work plan as a small player to this market. So that's why I think you will still get a chance. You focus on some very tiny piece, but it, I think that's enough for a company to grow rather than you know, you're targeting very big topic there. So. Thank you, that was very good. Thank you. Yeah. Amy from Lucky Hill. I have a question in terms of uh, monetization. So in terms of all the social casino apps, we all know um, for app stores, Google Play, iOS, um, the rules for socials is it's not real money. So, um, so the definition of gaming is real money in, a random, like, and then real money out. 
So, so far for my Vegas, for example, that's um, the loyalty point exchange and, you know, so what, how, how do you see how to differentiate themselves and then in terms of how to avoid risks? Um, because as far as we know, Double Down or Big Fish, uh, they don't do any of the loyalty points exchange versus my Vegas do. And how you, um, well, what's your understanding about the opportunity versus the risk? Um, I think the question is about you know how the game like the my Vegas, how they differentiate with the traditional casino games like Big Fish and Solomania, right? Yes, that's correct. Yeah. And then, sorry, and the second second point is why other people don't do it. Is there a risk? Um, for the first question, Solomania, Big Fish Casino, I would regard it as a first generation of the social casino on the mo mobile. So basically their, um, their business model is you make players enjoy the game, buy the chips, that's it. And my Vegas is very interesting. It's quite like the innovative for this industry. They actually, they are online to offline. They work with MGM. Actually MGM is their investor and also the shareholder for this company. So you, the players can play the game, get the loyalty points while you're playing the game, exchange these loyalty points to physics service. This service is provided, supplied by MGM. So that's online, offline. You, you, you can see it's another, you know, I would say, because we, 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 we try to follow up that, but it, it's difficult, you know, to build up the same model. It's another type of gaming, but still they can make money because not just one from the chips you're selling, but also get the branding opportunities, marketing, promotion inside the game. So my Vegas after this is quite different, but for the second question, why not others to follow up? You need a resource. Because you need the land-based operators to work with you, be partner with you, provide the marketing opportunity with you. So in Macau and in Vegas, if you walk into MGM, you can actually you can see lots of advertising for my Vegas for this app. So that means they get the traffic, they get the player traffic through the land base. You don't have to you know, get the traffic, you buy the audience, you buy the players, you acquire the, the players through the traditional, you know, the, 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 the Chinas, the promotion, you know, Chinas. They can get the fresh and very targeted players through the land base casino. So that's very tight partnership. This kind of opportunity is quite rare. So that's why other competitors, you know, either they need some very good gaming studio to work with them to make very fantastic games, or the good studios lead the, you know, the partnership with the land-based casino operators. So that's why I would say that the difficulty to build up the partnership, work with the operator is a barrier. We, we used to provide the similar product, which is called iMacall. It's, it's a similar system. We, we basically, we're setting the chips, but we try to work with the land-based operators. But some operators will be afraid, you know, to work with the online partner. They will worry about you going to drive their players out. They're going to lose their customers to someone else. So that's why the, the relationship between them sometimes is very hard to set up. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you very much indeed. Thank well, you, everyone. Thank you so much, Kevin. Thank you.